What's up, YouTube? I wanted to give a quick update real fast, or just like talk about leveling builds in general, or league start builds in general, about the Spark Necromancer. When I'm ready, I did try to change up the gear a little bit more to fit more of the actual gear you would have on league start to make it just seem like a more one-to-one -one experience. Because having the double damage scepter does kind of skew things, even though it only seems like an 8% damage increase. It is a lot of damage in terms of like, if you just start adding little things up, it does become a little big deal. So just wanted to say that I'm going to try to use more accurate gear in the future, even if it involves me going through 30 to 40 shields uh, trades in order to get it. So you can see... I changed up the tree a little bit thanks to Rutu and his advice. I was able to find out some... Because the pops I made were pretty lazy in general. I didn't really optimize it. So obviously like, this thread of hope here to get spiritual aid was bad. And then also added the Conqueror's efficiency in. So that's very, very good. And it also makes the build a little cheaper because you're not using thread of hope. But I wanted to talk a little bit about this build and I did play it a little bit more today on stream with this setup and I wanted to share my experience with it and how what I think the limitations of the build are and what potential fixes that there might be. Now overall I think the build is okay up to like if with this setup of course if you have a six link the damage becomes a lot better and with damage everything is solvable right. And there's a reason why damage is king for all boss fights. But with a 5 link, the damage is probably around like 2 to 3 million, maybe a little bit more, depending on your multi and other stuff like that and how good your arm module is. And that damage obviously is enough with this amount of HP, and you never die to chaos damage with this thing. And that damage is enough, is enough to do all the conquerors, it's enough to do awakener, it's enough to do shaper, it's enough to do shaper invitations, it's enough to do cortex, and it's enough to do uber ziri and all, every single thing in the game besides the feared. The fear was actually really hard to do. I tried it like three times today and it just did not happen. It's something to do with like the survivability of the build is a little too squishy. And because you don't have zealous self regen, it makes it a lot harder. But the fear is something is not doable probably on a five link consistently at all. And generally I would probably not touch the fear for league start builds. And I would try to sell off the cortex and... Yeah, it's hard to say, right? Because selling off the Cortex... Because the Cortex, you have to consider, is probably around like 30-40% to 40 of the cost of the whole build. So you can definitely upgrade your build a lot more. You can definitely get a 6 link if you are able to be in the realm of vicinity of completing the feared, right? So I just wanted to try it out because I just wanted to test the build's limits more than actually... What's it called? It being a realistic simulation of what you would actually be doing. But I'm going to go over the gear real fast. I'm going to go over some tree changes and... What I actually think about how you could upgrade the setup further. So again, like I said, Rutu did help me out in the POV. So he looked it over a little bit. Obviously, there's some glaring errors. Main thing is Conqueror's efficiency. I've completely forgot about this jewel. It's actually crazy that an ore stacker would forget about it. And then I took out this thread of hope here because this is actually very inefficient. These five points, if you put it into POV, these points right here to get this one node is a lot less than just getting aura effect in. So for this build right now, let me go over the gear I have real fast. So I have two nebuluses. I got rid of the double damage nebulous. I got this one. So when you want to buy a nebulous at League Star, you want to look for the role of the nebulous. The role of the nebulous is more important than the implicits most of the time. Unless you can get like some insane implicits like multi. But those implicits will cost make the nebulous cost a fortune. At least start like it'll probably be like three to four x instead of just like 20 30 chaos. And then this one's the same. This one is okay, it doesn't have a good roll 19 to 18 percent, so you could definitely get something better. And now we have this Alpha's How. This Alpha's How is Malevolence Reservation. Now, Alpha's How enchant usually are pretty expensive, but because of the lap change where you can choose the enchant you put on a helmet, they have become a lot, lot cheaper. And then we're still using this amulet. This amulet you can make with just spamming a Scorn Essence. It, the amulet does not need to be a Hunter amulet. Then you just craft on percent ES. I guess it's kind of lucky it got flat ES, but this is not even a Tier 1 Essence. So you would pretty much just spam it until you get flat ES, and then you can craft on the percent ES, or vice versa. Now this Malachi's Ring, I wanted to update you guys. So it turns out the Malachi's Ring is not as crazy as it sounds. Because when you smite, you actually get lightning damage, right? 
So the lightning damage actually applies to spells, so that means the flame golem does fire and lightning damage. And because of that, it EEs cold to negative 50, and then it EEs lightning to only negative 25. Right? Yeah, because yeah, so night lightning is only negative 25. You can only have one application of EE per element. So it's only negative 50 for cold, negative 25 for lightning instead of negative 50 for both. So the damage is a little bit lower. So when you actually do the pop, so I'm gonna also go over like how you can set up the pop to actually calculate the DPS for the build and what should actually be checked and what shouldn't be. So now we also have this chest here. So it's a five link chest. So I'm using Spark, 2123 Spark. You probably don't need 2123, but I also have 2020 Anomalous. So you use this one for clearing because you need the plus two for Pierce. And then you use this one. This gem should be relatively cheap for a 21 gem because no one really plays Spark at the start. You can usually probably get this for less than an Exalt. So you use Spark, Inspiration, Trinity, Pinpoint, and spell echo and you use these because these are the highest damage multipliers the spell echo is like 70 percent pinpoints 120 trinity is 50 percent and 20 percent pen inspiration is crit and it's uh, i think 35 percent more damage so those are pretty much unbeatable for the sixth link is obviously going to be arcane surge or controlled destruction if you have high enough crit and call of the brotherhood is another item that i think that you can get at league start and it should be relatively cheap so I actually really like using this site here. So this site allows you to see how much the items actually go up in price. So when you want to look at what items should you, should you actually buy for the aura stacker, looking at this is actually probably something pretty good. So you can see Call of the Brotherhood, kind of expensive on the first day, and then it drops to like down here. So it's like 30, 40 chaos, right? And then you have March of the Legion. March of the Legion boots are kind of an unknown entity, right? Because some people recommend it for their League Start builds. But we can see historically what the price of March of the Legion is. So this is a very good estimate. So right here, someone made a video, right? 63 chaos. But demand is just too... This, this item is just too popular, right? It's too common. Not that many people will use it. So it'll probably be around 2 to 3 to 5 chaos probably. And then we have this belt, which is just a life chaos res belt, another like ES and then crafted chaos res. So this stuff you can pretty easily get and it shouldn't be too bad, right? And then you have a Xeris Promise and then these flasks. If you were trying to upgrade the build, you would probably upgrade flask first. Like I said before, you try to get Bottle of Faith, Cinder Swallow Urn, and then you would try to get Hands of the High Templar or plus four would probably already be better than this by quite a bit. And now for the jewels. So the jewels you have this watcher side. I'm not really sure how much this watcher side would be. I would assume it's not that good. This is only a two modded watcher side. Not really sure how much it would be. But the chaos res is pretty important to get early on. You could get some better later on. But chaos res until you're at like 70% or 60% the build will feel unplayable. Because you will die to chaos damage at 684 HP. And now we go to the bulk of the cost of the build. The bulk of the cost of the build will always be the first among replenishing clusters or these ones. Now I recommend to get 5 points on them because 5 points allows us to have extra points to take. And these nodes after a certain point will just be better than will just be better than taking there's no other damage nodes to take on the tree. So you have to take those nodes there. So we have one cluster, two cluster, three cluster, four clusters. So you can pretty much expect those four clusters to cost like 4x. And then you have these large clusters which are around 30 chaos if I remember at League Star. So this is just a three notable one. Burden, Projection, Essence, Rush, Practice, Caster. And this one allows us to get like stun immunity almost when we're casting. And it gives us a percent leech with ES. And this is just used because it's really cheap. Ideally you could also get a Voices but I think Voices was pretty expensive early on. So I can't really recommend that. Now, for the jewels, you want like ES and phasing if possible. Phasing on kill is huge. I don't have a phasing jewel. I don't know where it went. I think it's this one. So you want something like this, right? So this will be a really good jewel as phasing. And then you have percent chance to get phasing on kill with ES. And then we have Conqueror's Efficiency. We need this for our RMR and also has skill duration, which is really good for Spark and our boots. And then here we have the Watcher's Eye, like I said. And then these jewels are really cheap. If you can get 
crit multi for spells or crit multi with lightning is the best and crit multi while dual wielding with rmr these usually go for like 5 to 10 chaos at the start and then this one might of the meek might of the meek it's like a lot of people ask like what to buy and then the answer is to always just search this right this tells all it's all statistics so might of the meek 6 to 5 chaos at the start goes up to 10 chaos intuitive leap so you have to also know when you're trying to like gear an aura stacker like early on you can get a lot of stuff a lot cheaper so it seems like intuitive leap should be one of the first buys right so i'll probably make a video later going over like the items you should buy early on so like intuitive leap definitely one of them bottle faith is another one uh, bottle faith where is bottle faith so like, this is why these items are important to buy flasks actually usually go up in price a little bit uh, Cinder Swallow, I think, actually, did it go up in price or did it go down? I think it went down. The Cinder Swallow one is actually stays a little bit steady and then goes down. So flasks are generally not too bad of an investment to buy, especially the Bottle Faith. So you should probably try to pick up Intuitive Leap and the Bottle Faith pretty early on, if possible. And then I don't really know how much Sack of Walls is, so let's see how much Sack of Walls is. So this is like helping you guys, I hope, to see like what's actually, how much everything is at the start of the league. So 5 link stack of walls is, wow, it's actually really cheap. What? A 5 link stack of walls is 80 chaos. So you probably expect it to be like one 2x probably because you want a good well-rolled one. And a well-rolled one is usually a little bit more, like an exalt more premium. But wow, 5 link stack of walls is pretty cheap. So you can see every single item in this build, if you go through the poe ninja is relatively affordable now this doesn't mean that you have to play this version of the aura stacker you can play the scion version it'd be a lot better so do not buy do not try to play this build on day one or two or at day three it's a lot more affordable so you have 10 chaos or so 20 chaos maybe for a good roll so you have 20 chaos 20 chaos what is this alpha's how is dirt cheap probably 30 to 50 chaos right alpha's how has to be extremely affordable so Alpha's how we have here is probably 4 chaos item with the enchant probably 40 to 50 chaos max. Probably a little less. And then all these stuff, cha champion of the cause, golden oil. So every single item, super affordable, but we have to come to the in the end, the build is playable in T60 maps. It is not the best variant of the aura stacker. The best variant of the aura stacker is a scion. And I do have a Scion League start build, which is Stormbrand, and that build is actually a lot better than this build. That build can do a feared on like a 5 link budget with 5 link Cloak of Defiance because Agnostic regen is just too strong at the moment. But this build is fine if you want to play a Witch at League start for whatever reason. I wanted to go into a little bit about the difference between League leveling builds and like League start builds and what this actually means. So people often wonder like what I mean by an aura stacker for league start. An aura stacker for league start is never going to be the first build you can play. Like never. It's not going to be feasible because an aura stacker is a build that requires a lot of moving parts to all to be together in order to play it. You need the alpha's hell, you need the sack of walls, you need the call of the brotherhood for the conversion. You need the nebulosis to benefit from the cold and lightning resist. You need the march of the legion to put the auras in. You need to buy like level 21 ores or to level it up to have the high purities. You cannot league start it as the first build. When I say league start, it means that it's a build that will be one of the first builds of the league for you. So league start, I would assume in my eyes, I know it's just a matter of semantics with words. League start for me means like a build that you intend to be the one that is the one that you want to max out. And... There's a build for like League Leveling, right? For Leveling, for this build, you probably want to play a Spell Slinger. Well, for this build, if you wanted to play a League Start build, I do have a Spark Spell Slinger guy. But Spark Spell Slinger is miles worse than Archmage Cremation. And I will try to make a build for Build Guide for people who want to play like the super meta Leveling skills. But I want to make sure that the Leveling skills are not nerfed because Armageddon Brand Cremation could be completely changed or something like that. You never know. With GGG, especially how they just announced that they're doing a huge meta shift, whatever that may mean. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later. 
So the way you should approach like league starting or stackers is you can't play the build on day one. You can't play it on day two. And it's probably not a good idea to try to play it until day three to four when some of the items that are super high in value go down. So you don't want to be buying a nebulous, right? At day one or two prices just to play the or stacker. And also the or stacker is also a build that at like 10 to 15 X or 20 X even is going to perform a lot worse than other builds at that price point. It's a build that you want to eventually make max out because eventually the build will be the best build in the game with a lot of currency invested into it. And it's not like it's a bad build. It's just it does not perform as well as other builds for the currency investment. So it's not a cost efficient build by any stretch of the imagination. So I just wanted to clear that up. Like this setup I made is pretty good in terms of cost efficiency, but it still requires all the components so the best way to approach playing this build at the league start, and by league start I mean like the first few days or so, is to just buy the pieces. And I will make a video about the pieces that you should buy first, but it seems like you should be buying intuitive leap first. You should be putting off the stuff that drops from bosses, like nebuluses, until it's more widely spread. Alpha's house is something you can buy relatively early on. It doesn't really change in price. March of the Legion boost is the same thing. The clusters you should probably buy ASAP as these usually go up in price and they're usually pretty low at the start. So the cost of the build is really irrelevant, right? You just want to save up gear on the, your actual like league leveling build that you first do. And by the time you go through like yellow maps to like low reds, you should have enough currency to like be able to play this build. Hopefully, because you need to farm like 10 to 15 extra, however much you're comfortable with swapping. Obviously, the more currency you have, into the build it'll feel a lot lot better so that's just something to keep in mind is that this build is not going to be like the first first build you play like a lot of people are enamored with the fact that you can play the skill from the start to the end of time right so you start with like exsanguinate at level 12 you never swap out of it but for this build and any aura stackers in general the best way to approach it is to always play the best league start build or the best like leveling build or the best mapping build for the cost. So in a lot of cases, it's Armageddon brand, Cremation for Necromancer probably. And for Scion, it's Storm brand, I think Archmage. I think Tai Tai Killer was doing a leveling run with the Ascendant Storm brand and it seemed to be okay from what I saw. So that's actually the best way to approach it. I just wanted to clear it up is to have an actual strong lead starter. And it could be the most meta thing ever. The more meta, the better. The more meta means you can sell off your gear pieces better to afford the actual aura stacker pieces. So then you buy the high value pieces and then you actually transition to the aura stacker. Whether it be Necromancer or it be Scion. Necromancer is probably worse than Scion, but it's a different play style. And yeah, I mean, I can't really recommend Necromancer full on over Scion. But the two builds are like almost near identical. Only difference is the pathing at the start and of course the ascendancy. But that's about it for that. I will probably like include a clip of the Shaper Invitation, Deathless on a 5 link and this whole setup that I'm currently using. I'll have this updated pop in the description below. And then I'm going to talk about the next thing which is the GGG guarantee of a meta shift. So we have this tweet here I just brought to my attention and it says exact details of our upcoming expansion will drop at the end of this week. While we haven't provided many hints yet you should know that this expansion shakes up Path of Exile's metagame in a big way. Now what does this mean? Does metagame mean the skills will be changed a lot so the new best skills will no longer be like or stack or cast on crit or exsanguinate or whatever people like to play are slams and hardcore or does it mean they're going to shift the metagame in endgame because right now the end game is mostly just getting to endgame maps finding an atlas region passive you like to do and spamming it and doing awakener on the side and that's pretty much how the game is played right so it'll be really interesting to see what they mean by this tweet so i'm actually really looking forward to expansion this tweet pretty much guarantees that this will be the best expansion yet According to them, right? Because a lot of the PoE for me personally is to stay on the end game. So this means that everything will be different. I'm going to be playing a completely different game. Like who knows if Aura Stacker will even be the build for me anymore. With this tweet and the expansion, the sky is the limit. And it's always good to have a good perspective, right? So I just wanted to end the video with that. And I wanted 
and I just hope like everyone gets more clarification on this build for the Spark Necromancer. It's very important for people to know that Spark Necromancer is not going to be the best starter. It is viable as a transition build, so you want to become this build later on as the second build, but you need to find yourself a solid league starter. I did try to do a Spark Spell Slinger build. The Spark Spell Slinger build is okay. Even self cast Spark is okay with wands, but there's going to be better league starter builds for it. And my build was not too fleshed out for like just leveling and doing like yellow maps in general. It was very general because I was just doing what I had in my stash. So I will make a video for actually how to level up a witch. The Scion one is already done. So a witch one with Archmage Cremation with a Necro would probably be very good. You can even do Volatile Dead Spell Slinger DD. But we'll see what the patch notes bring and then I'll bring a video out about it. And I hope everyone enjoyed the content. I really try to like explain the prices of the items and how you should determine what pieces you should buy for an ore stack at first. So thanks everyone for watching. I do stream every day on Twitch. And I hope you find more mirrors and exalts than I do. And see you next time.